Hi everybody. In today's example here, we're going to show you how to create a pipe subassembly for use for creating uh, pipe pressure pipes with corridor modeling tool. And then we're going to show an example of how that's useful uh, and very easy to do. Uh, the subassembly we're going to create, we're going to do it from scratch, but essentially it's going to look like this when we're done. Uh, it's going to have four segments uh, attached to an assembly marker. Um, what, how this is made up is that you basically draw the arc of the pipe and you have to have a different subassembly for every pipe diameter. So essentially we're going to have, uh, eventually you're going to create one for each pipe size diameter and they're generic. They're just an 18 inch pipe, 15 inch pipe, 12 inch pipe. So it does take a little bit of time to get them first set up. Once you get them added into your pallet and uh, maybe even spread company wide there, um, once they're done, they're done. To do that, uh, you know, each of these subassembly pieces is a different piece. And then if you click on the assembly marker here for this example we have and hit subassembly or assembly properties, you can see how it's made up of the right side two pieces and the left side two pieces. Um, why is it, you know, split up? Why can't you just do one big circle? Uh, I'll show that as we go here. So to get started, we're just going to, you know, get on any layer really and draw a circle. And we're going to do a six inch diameter pipe, so we're going to do a diameter. And uh, 0.5. And we're going to break that apart. Use a ray command. And essentially, the first piece we're going to do is this lower quadrant here. So I really just need these pieces here. This piece. I'm going to go over to my create uh, subassembly from polyline tool, and I'll pick that. And if you create it in this manner, uh, it's going to use. You can't really tell it the insertion point of that subassembly, but it's going to use this bottom part here, which is nice because that's representative of the invert of the pipe. So we're going to get, sort of have to come up with a naming convention here. What I've come up with for us is at least a, you know, a six inch, and then I name it uh, like southeast, uh, sort of for the southeast quadrant of the pipe. All right, so Essentially, you can't get any lower than this value. I believe at least in 2009, I, I didn't try it in 2011, but this will be enough. This is uh, going to how it's actually going to break this into little segments and add these little uh, point codes along the way, and it's using the mid ordinate distance of 0.01 feet. So just leave that, and hit OK, and you can see it breaks it apart there. Next part you need to do is if you right click on this and you hit assembly or subassembly properties, and you go to codes, you can see I don't have any codes assigned. So when I go to use this in a corridor tool, that's sort of crucial. I need to have some sort of coding. So the next part is just add some codes to that. I'm going to click on this, right click and hit add codes. Uh, it's going to uh, ask me for a code name. Eventually we're going to actually uh, use this, and I'm going to hit escape here just to show you something. We're going to use this and create two surfaces. One surface is going to be to uh, you know, draw the bottom of the pipe. So we're going to have a, a surface that represents the bottom of the pipe. Since you can't have surfaces on top of each other, you'd have a second surface that would represent the top of the pipe. That would be these two. So in that, to, you know, so you can easily create those two surfaces. When you create these uh, codes, hit add code, and we're going to call this pipe bottom. So that will show up in our corridor model. It would be very easy. And then, uh, so pipe bottom. And it says pick uh, subassembly point, link, or shape. I'm going to pick the link, which is going to be this the blue line here. I'm going to repeat that and pick each of these point codes. Now, for the the last code on the the last point code on this outside, what we want to do is call that something a little different. If we call that the pipe boundary, we'll actually be able to create a boundary from that one. So for that last one. Just hit add code here, call this pipe, EMUI, and select that point code. Now it starts getting a little simpler. So now we can come into here, um, go up to our tools, our creation tools here, and create an assembly. So we're going to call this 6-inch pipe, and just place assembly marker there back in. I'm going to add this subassembly 
to my assembly. So that links it up. And now I can just mirror that. Okay, create the other side. So now the next part is creating the top. So we're going to draw another circle. And I'm going to trim out the next quadrant, which is going to essentially be this top quadrant. And going to repeat the same steps. So probably pause here in just a second and then just complete through. But I'm going to go into create subassembly from polyline again and call this uh, six inch northwest or northeast. Hit OK. And uh, one thing I did forget is since I mirrored that, I want to go back into that subassembly. I'm going to call this southwest. Just change the name of that subassembly. Because ultimately I'm going to drag this off. You know, once I create this once, I want to have it nice and pretty so I can put it in my palette and use it company wide. I'm going to repeat the same steps here. So I'm going to right click on this, hit add code, call this pipe top, pick the link. And right click on it again, hit add code, call this pipe top, pick each of these point codes. So I have to repeat that a bunch of times. Okay, so once that uh, is created, we're going to add that subassembly to our assembly, and I'm going to actually add it on this side. And then again, I'm going to just mirror that over this side and there's our pipe top. There's our pipe bottom. Go ahead and rename this subassembly to southwest or northwest, sorry. And then if I go into assembly properties, I can see them all. And if I go into codes, you can see they're coded with the tops and the bottoms. 